welcome. Well, again, we're coming back, not you. So anyway, we're back and now we have a presentation which we call Laptops to Lumi. So the basic idea is that at the start of this course, so on day one, we were talking about small scale, like the kind of skills you need to know. Like, you know, you start with your laptop, you go to other university resources and, and so on. But you can easily scale beyond where we are now. So beyond Triton to what's at CSC. And CSC has much bigger computers than Triton has. And not only that, so their largest is the, well, it's a EU, well, I guess UC will tell us exactly how it's organized, but Lumi is going to be the largest or one of the largest supercomputers, not just in Europe, but in the world and is managed by CSC. So using the lessons we're learning now, you can basically continue your work up to that scale if you need to. Of course, there's a whole lot of other considerations, but it's sort of, we want to introduce you to what the path can have afterwards. So with that being said, um, Yusi, can you please tell a bit more about yourself and we can begin. Okay, thank you, Richard. Uh, nice to be here. Uh, uh, I said, my name is Yusi Enkovara. I work at CSC in high performance computing support. Uh, my background is in, in physics, so Aalto, sort of, or Helsinki University of Technology is my alma mater. I made my PhD there in 2003 uh, using CSC supercomputers, doing my diploma thesis and my, uh, my PhD. And then after doing a postdoc, I ended up at CSC doing various things related to uh, supercomputers, uh, programming supercomputers, uh, etc. Uh, with this presentation, uh, I'll first briefly describe what CSC is. So, in addition to being the National Supercomputing Center, we are uh, we do also quite a bit of other stuff, and then I. I discuss a bit that uh, what what sort of CSC has has to offer, how they relate to the things uh, with with Triton and so on. You have already discussed and in in what kind of situations uh, CSC services might be uh, good solutions for you. Not only related to the computing, but also to the data management and stuff. And finally, discuss briefly that okay, if you need to use CSC services. Uh, how to how to get started. Uh, before actually going for what CSC is, um, if you go to HackMD, I put there a simple question, uh, whether you have used some CSC service or not. So please uh, mark there. And I, I'll know a bit that how familiar you are, what we are, uh, what we are doing. Okay. I can already see that uh, quite a few people. Uh, have used some services, or at least know that they have been using some services. Uh, I really doubt that most of the people that transfer here know if we take these CSC services in a bit the broader context, so not only the supercomputers, you are actually using CSC services, even not necessarily knowing about that. So if we actually look a bit more at what CSC as, as a full is, I mean, First of all, we are a non-profit company uh, owned by the Ministry of Education and the uh, universities and polytechnics in Finland. And uh, in a bit broader perspective, we provide various IT services for the research and higher education. Supercomputers are of course one thing, but uh, 
we also produce services like like Funet, so the main network between the Finnish universities, Haka authentication, Eduroma, just some examples. So actually, if you are studying or doing a research in any of the Finnish universities, I'm 100% sure that, uh, or let's say 99% sure that you're actually using at least some of our, our services. Uh, maybe important point here related to the non-profit aspect and, and the funding from Minister of Education, that most of the services are free of charge for our end users. Uh, from now on, uh, we'll, I'm, I'm not going to discuss this uh, Funet, Haka, etc. anymore, so we will be focusing on on the computing and data services and mostly from the perspective of user who is already has uh, software that he or she wants to wants to run and, and maybe scale scale up the simulations not so much on on perspective of uh, uh, if you're developing your own application so i'm not going to discuss that uh, what you actually need to do in order to have your application to run yeah, in full scale in Lumi because that's that, that that's really wide wide topic. Uh, first question, if uh, of course this is that okay, when you might be needing CSC, and in many aspects this is actually uh, you start with that when you actually need something beyond let's say your own workstation or or laptop, and of course, it really depends that uh, what you are doing. Uh, actually, for some things, uh, laptop might be might be better. If I just look for my laptop, I'm giving this presentation now. The individual CPU cores, they are, in fact they are a bit uh, bit more efficient, at least in terms of pure computing power, uh, in terms of clock frequency, than, for example, CPUs in CS super supercomputers. Puhti and Mahti. So if I would only need to do something, let's say compute something with single CPU core, which would take half an hour and not to consume that much memory or disk space, then I probably would achieve the end result faster with my laptop than, than using the, the supercomputer. Things are of course different when, uh, when the calculation would start to take much longer, and it's something that could be could be parallelized. Uh, of course, other thing is that it uh, it doesn't necessarily parallelize that far, but it really needs lots of memory. So, for example, in my laptop, I would have uh, 16 gigabytes of memory, and I think the maximum possible configuration would be 32 gigabytes. So, if I need uh, more de more memory than, than that, of course, I, I need to do something else. And uh, uh, as, a, as a sort of contrast that uh, at CSC, and I guess in Triton, you, you could get up to two terabytes at maximum. I think CSC doesn't even have that large. It's only 1.5 terabytes. So that's uh, that's the other clear use case when you when you might, might want to use uh, either CSC or, or Triton. I'll come a bit later on that in uh, what are the main differences in uh, services provided by, by CSC when you, when you compare to something like Triton. And uh, then third very, very likely case is that uh, yeah, you work with uh, large data sets. Uh, either your input data is large or your simulation produce lots of data. And once again, uh, my laptop has in total something like 226 gigabytes, I guess. There, of course, the operating system and uh, everything takes uh, quite the amount. And if I really need a lot of a lot of data, I, I really cannot use that. And uh, you get much more storage space in uh, in CSC and in also also in other, other supercomputers. Uh, one more case. Uh, still pretty much applicable so just to CSC as to as to university clusters is that you want to use some scientific application 
And if it's some commercial application, it might be that it's actually quite expensive. Uh, you don't want to pay for that. You you won't have the money money for that. But it might be that uh, it's available. CSC, for example, has very large collection of scientific software, also commercial, uh, where we pay the license, and they are for the users of CSC. Uh, they are free free then for academic research. Or oh, even if it's not sort of expensive application, uh, even uh, uh, open source or free applications. Uh, it might save you some time if you don't need to uh, install or maintain and update that yourself, if that's already available. Uh, one further thing that uh, if you go a bit that uh, what you do, let's say after the computing, uh, if you produce lots of data that uh, you would like to share, and I think that's something where you don't necessarily have the similar services at, at university level is that if you if you want to share the data to some group of people or even more if you want to publish the data and make it make it so that it's uh, easily findable for other people or other people might even even cite your data okay then to the big question that uh, in in many ways i would say that the, really the biggest step uh, in your scientific computing career is really going from a local workstation to some uh, HPC cluster or uh, supercomputer, how you want to want to call them. Uh, so uh, you will have something which is shared by multiple users. Uh, you will have something which has the batch job system. So your applications won't be starting immediately. And if you once you have taken this step and if you then sort of look at okay how using csc supercomputers actually differs from using triton the difference is actually quite minor so as richard already said the main difference really is in scale the amount of resources uh, in terms of pure CPU power or GPUs, and also in terms of storage. Uh, in terms of single node, I think, uh, as said, there are not that big differences, but you, what you would get from CSC or, or from Triton. And as an example, uh, I don't remember now what's the maximum number of uh, CPU cores that you can use in Triton, but I guess it's in the order of, I don't know, 2000 or something like that would that, that be okay and in contrast with Mahti uh, you could go up to 25,000 cores uh, in some cases even more or if you're using GPUs uh, in Triton I think uh, there is maximum of uh, eight GPUs at the same time you can use uh, already with uh, with Pufti and Mahti national supercomputers you can use around 20 GPUs and in Lumi uh, we don't know yet what's the usage policy will be but uh, at least hundreds of GPUs at the same time will be available. Storage space is also something that you will you will get uh, even more at, at CSC so the default scratch space in CSC supercomputers is uh, one terabyte and if needed you can uh, you can also request more. Uh, the command line access that's that's very similar. You SSH into cluster, and I said you use the module system. Uh, you use the batch queue system. Uh, as a new thing, I I think I I saw you briefly in, in a moment is that for Pufti, uh, you can actually use use that via web browser. Uh, one difference what comes to the using is that uh, uh, CSC, you, there is something called billing units. So you can think that that's a sort of virtual money. So before you start to use some CSC supercomputers or uh, data storage services, you need to apply for billing units. And then when you are uh, using these resources, they will be consuming these billing units and then when you run out of the billing units 
uh, you need to apply again for them. And main reason really for this is that uh, we are we are serving really large customer base. So I think at the moment there are something like three thousand people uh, using CSC resources, and with that we sort of try to make make sure that the the resources they are shared somehow equally between users and also try to make sure that uh, they are uh, they utilized somehow wisely so for example when when billing units are applied typically you are required to somehow show that where you have have been using them so what kind of scientific publications uh, you have you have produced with that that actually for the individual user that's not something that uh, that you need to worry that much it's more task of the of the project manager and i get back that a bit more when we when we discuss actually how to get access to the CSC supercomputers. And by the way, I mean, if you have uh, any any questions and so on, feel free to ask in the HackMD. I, I try to have a look on that by now and then. And also at the end of the talk. Uh, let's discuss then that, okay, what are these uh, actual computing services that CSC provides and uh, I try to spare you from the technical details so you can go to our user documentation and look for more details if you are if you're interested. So the basic uh, national supercomputers are Puhti and Mahti. Both have been, uh, Puhti has been around for about three years and Mahti a bit less than, than two years. Uh, Puhti is more of the general purpose computer. Uh, you can do more, let's say, interactive single core stuff, uh, medium scale parallel simulations. It has some uh, varying amount of memory in nodes. So in, in a basic configuration, uh, there are 192 gigabytes of memory per node. Uh, but then there are some large memory nodes. And as I said, there is also this web interface. And math is more uh, geared towards, uh, towards medium and large scale parallel simulations. Uh, Pufti has Intel CPUs, 40 cores per node, and AMD has, uh, Mahti has AMD CPUs with 128 cores per node. So which one of these two would be more suitable? It really depends on type of research you are doing. Uh, generally the software selection Puhti said that's that's the more general purpose computer. Uh, it has more software available and uh, if you are using something uh, let's say few tens CPU cores up to a few hundred or so uh, Puhti might be the better choice for you. Uh, some of the CPU nodes they have also fast local disk. Uh, so if you're doing some, uh, let's say, machine learning stuff with CPUs or uh, other way something, some analysis where you really need to uh, read and write a lot, uh, lot of data to the disk and you, if you really need a fast disk, Pufti might be, might be good. And for stuff like using Jupyter Notebooks, RStudio and these kind of things, both is probably more suitable. Uh, as already said, Mahti is more geared towards uh, medium and large scale simulations. Um, uh, the minimum unit you can normally request from Mahti, that's, uh, that's a one node. And as uh, one single node contains uh, 128 CPU cores, this is sort of uh, minimum amount of CPU cores that you're applications should, should be able to use more or less efficiently. And it's, uh, uh, if you really need to do very large scale simulations, Mahti is, Mahti is really the machine for you. Uh, without additional privileges, you can do uh, simulations up to 20 nodes. That's uh, uh, yeah, two and a half thousand CPU cores. And if you, if you want to use more than that, uh, one, one sort of has to make uh, apply, apply for that, uh, that then 
do some scalability testing. One practical aspect also when, when choosing which machine is used that, okay, uh, when you're using the batch job system, really depending how many other users there are and how much resources they need, uh, the queuing times might differ. And uh, at least lately, the CPU partitions in Mahti, uh, they have had a bit, bit shorter queues. Both machines have some uh, GPUs also available. Uh, Mahti has a bit more recent and a bit more powerful ones, but if you're doing using GPUs, it's uh, more, uh, both machines are uh, quite okay. Uh, that's a very brief demonstration about the uh, web interface. So as I said, that's a, that's a new service. So you can just go to pufti.csc.fi with your web browser. You can sign in with your CSC user account. And then once you get logged in, what you can actually do, you can do various stuff uh, with supercomputers just from your web browser. So let's say if I would like to use some Jupyter notebooks in Pufti, I can start them directly from browser here. I can say that, okay, how many CPU cores I would like to reserve that, how much memory, etc. And launching here, I would actually get the notebook just here in my browser. So for some use cases that might be might be convenient and, and bit easy to use. Uh, in previous times, if you wanted to use, let's say, Jupyter Notebooks uh, in CSC supercomputers, you had to set up some SSH tunnels and things like which are a bit more complex. Uh, sometimes uh, the operating system you have in the supercomputing and uh, system libraries might be limiting bit what what kind of software you can you can install there around that they might be not up to date or for some other reasons you would need the more flexibility than than provided by by Pufti or Mahti and uh, for these kind of circumstances CSC has also some cloud computing services of course it means that uh, in order to use these you you need to do more work uh, yourself, uh, you need to make the virtual image, you need to be sort of responsible for the uh, somehow all the sysadmin stuff there. And uh, CSC offers basically three different types of cloud computing services. So we have a CPOTA, which is a kind of a general computing cloud. And then for cases where you need to work with the sensitive data, uh, personal information, health data, some gene data, this kind of black stuff. Uh, there is also ePOTA uh, that requires a bit more to get get into use, and it, it's basically isolated from the from the normal internet. So there is, uh, let's say, briefly, it's it's much more secure and really meant for uh, sensitive data. And then if you don't need to sort of uh, work with full virtual machines, but uh, some containers up and there is also the Rahti container cloud. You can, for example, use that for running some web services, actually to CSC user documentation. If you look at that, that's, that's run on top of Rahti. Um, okay, let's uh, then go to the final end of the scale in the resources. Um, so Lumi. Uh, Lumi, as already mentioned, uh, it's it's going to be or it's hosted by CSC, and it's a pan-European supercomputer funded by the European Commission and by members of the Lumi Consortium. Uh, Finland is uh, is one member there, and there are also uh, nine other members. Uh, maybe the important thing for for Finnish users is that the uh, resources, they are sort of uh, divided or distributed uh, according to how, how different partners are funding the project. In practice, that means that about 25% of the whole Lumi uh, will be dedicated to the Finnish users. 
access is supplied uh, via CSC. So in that way for Finnish users, it shows up uh, sort of similar to other CSC supercomputers. Uh, it's going to have over 10,000 GPUs. So pretty the main processing power comes from GPUs. And of course, in order to use that, it, it really means that your software needs to be something that can, can utilize GPUs. Uh, and it's expected that uh, uh, when, when sort of ready, uh, it should be within the five most powerful computers in the world, most likely number two or three. And hopefully that will be available to users in, in forthcoming summer. There is also supporting CPU partition, small in the quotation marks because that's uh, actually a bit larger than Mahdi. And uh, Lumi will have some nodes with extremely lot of lots of memory for data analytics and other stuff up to 32 terabytes. So that's uh, that's something that uh, really, if you have a problem that can scale up and can utilize GPUs. Uh, you can you can really get lots of computing power. How to actually, if you do not have a software that already runs with GPUs, then getting that to ready to Lumi and uh, getting that to scale up, that's that's a whole different story and part of, I don't know, <laughs> one month training at, at least. Not, not really, but uh, there are some training courses organized by CSC, how to program for GPUs and how to get, get ready for Lumi. Okay, that covers pretty much the computing services we have. Uh, as already said, uh, some services that, that CSC provides that you do not directly have a, have a similar ones in the uh, Triton, for example, or in, in Alto IT or in other universities, uh, the data management and, and storage services. So uh, let's see you use your computation uh, you produce some amount of data and you somehow would like to use that data uh, both in supercomputers on your laptop and maybe also share to some some co-workers and for these kind of uh, needs csc has the alas object storage server and uh, you can share today you can also control somehow the uh, you, you can have a different levels of access control there. So uh, you can share only with the limited set of people or for whole world or just for yourself uh, or let's say for your project, but you, whatever you think that would be suitable. And uh, you, can, you can really directly access that also from the supercomputer. It's not that fast as the uh, scratch disk in the, in the supercomputers. So in, in typical use scenarios, you might have some data sets in, in ALAS. Uh, then before you start to process them, you download them to the supercomputer file systems. And when you finish, you might upload that again to ALAS. Uh, then I already mentioned that in some cases, you would like to publish your data sets and make it so that the other people can, can find that. So for these kind of needs, there are these so-called uh, FAI data services, findable, accessible, interoperable, reusable. And there are in principle tools you can use for adding metadata, your data. You can describe the data so that other people can easier search for that. And some of these uh, the FAI data services you can use also for searching other data sets. Uh, as uh, last, but may hopefully not least, uh, some other services CSC provides, uh, in addition to these computing and data training services. So we have a quite large number of training courses in different aspects of cyber computing every year. Uh, you can ask help for visualization of your scientific data. And then if you need in your particular scientific discipline, uh, you need some help that, okay, maybe what software I would like to use or how to use that software. Uh, you can get some help also, also from CSC. Uh, 
you have of, of course the local local support here that you can you can also try to reach. Uh, if you're developing an application and uh, you think that uh, you would need some help in getting that to parallelize better, perform better, CSC provides also support there in a way similar that you you will get also locally from your uh, RSCs, your precision software engineers and. CSC often works in in collaboration with them. So, if you have these kind of needs, you can you can directly contact CSC or first start from your local RSC. Uh, just as uh, before finishing, some advertisement of some topical training training issues. Uh, we we uh, we have developed a sort of uh, self study popular level a course about the supercomputing which you might find useful you can find that in it's hosted by Kajani and Polytechnics uh, you can see the link here and find also in CSC pages and uh, if you can get want to get a bit more into how to how to use CSC uh, supercomputers we have this uh, using CSC environment efficiently coming in in March Content is in some aspects quite similar, actually, but you what you have in this course, and then that's not entirely sure yet. Uh, depends a bit on the Corona situation, but we have for many years we have run uh, around ten day summer school about high performance computing, and I hope that we can arrange that also in the upcoming summer. Okay, as so a final thing, how to actually get access to CSC supercomputers and services. So first of all, you need to have a CSC user account. So the one I used uh, logging into Puhti. Uh, you can do that in the my.csc.fi. And if you come from uh, Finnish university, you already have a hack out in the case and that will be only a couple of mouse clicks. Uh, I already mentioned that when you use CSC resources, they consume these uh, billing units. So you need to apply for them. And actually, in order to apply billing units and use them, you, you need to belong some CSC project. Uh, project uh, cannot be applied by anyone. So it should be a, a project manager should be experienced researchers, typically postdoc or higher. But once the project manager for example, your supervisor has the project and has applied for the billing units. They can easily add users to the project when they have the CSC user account. Okay, uh, just to finish, here are some links to CSC user documentation and services I, I mentioned. Then, if there are any uh, uh, questions at this point, uh, I would be happy to take them so it's okay seems... there is one question about the uh, rsc like support for free uh well uh, i would say that uh, mostly answer is yes there not not really for anybody so of course, most of the CSC services, they are funded by the uh, Finnish government. So they are four researchers working in uh, Finnish universities. Uh, I guess that if you uh, want to use our, let's say, optimization service, you most likely you already are CSC user and most likely you, you would like to run your software uh, at, at CSC. It, that also depends a bit that really how extensive service you need. So maybe more typically, let's say these uh, free to use cases is not that uh, we take your software and, and make it faster. So typically we might be doing some uh, performance analysis and then together with you, uh, we, we try to give uh, suggestions that, okay, what you could do for improving the performance and uh, not do the whole job for you, but help him there, and hopefully in the way you will you will learn also that. Then in some cases we might be collaborating in some academy projects and so on, and 
uh, might be doing, let's say, more extensive job in, in software, but that typically then requires some additional uh, funding support. Yeah, uh, let's see. So are your courses available for people to browse the material without registering or outside of the course times? Uh, the material that's typically available, yeah. Let's okay. say if it's something, uh, course is given by CSC stuff, mm -hmm. then material is typically published in the course web page. Most of the material you can find also in, in GitHub, mm -hmm. exercises and, and so on. Uh, it's also mostly, I mean, if it's CS produced by CSC, it's typically also under Creative Commons, so you can also okay. freely use that uh, yeah. with, the, let's say, giving the credit and, and so on. Uh, sometimes we might have uh, external lecturers, we might have people from Intel or somewhere else, and then it's of course up to them that what's the license and copyright of the material. Mm -hmm. Okay. So maybe, I mean, just, uh, yeah, there is already the GitHub CSC training, so you can actually find a quite, quite a lot of material there. Okay. Yeah, I would probably add a <laughs> great talk, you see. I would uh, probably add like this kind of a, like all of these computings are pretty much like a spectrum. Like there's like, a, you have all different scales, you have vastly different scales uh it evolves but but it's all a spectrum and you might be at certain point of your like computational life uh so currently uh, but it's good to be aware of where you might end up in in later time even if you're currently working with a problem that might not fully utilize let's say supercomputers or csc resources you might want to push you towards that direction or you might recognize that okay your problem actually might benefit from this so in four five years you might be there uh working on this supercomputer so it's good to mm -hmm. keep that in mind other thing that to keep in mind is that basically there's these national supercomputers all around europe and all around the world so even if you're not here in finland if somebody's watching outside of finland uh there might be similar resources available through collaboration or through uh, through your local place. But it doesn't mean that the information, let's say, in the training places uh, or documentation doesn't translate because much of these systems are uh, very much alike. So, so you might still benefit from looking at through the materials, even if you, they're not completely relevant to your use case. And of course, I mean, many of things, how to use certain software, uh, some programming uh, courses and so on, they are they're mostly translatable. So there might be details that, okay, which module and actual compile commands you need to write in particular system, but let's say something, how to program GPUs with Bitcuit and MPI, I mean, that applies more or less to, to everybody. And, and really, also, I think it is a very good point. This this spectrum, so it uh, it it really is wide, and it typically uh, people I think go a bit on faces. So I think there are very <laughs> rare people that would start to do simulations with uh, uh, hundreds of GPUs at first. So typically, you start with something something a bit smaller. You you learn. Uh, in the way of doing that, but then it, it might be that actually the problems that you want to study or within your group you study and so on, I mean, they get bigger and then they need to also, also scale up the simulations. And maybe for these resources, so for example, Lumi, I said that's, uh, uh, that's funded by both the consortium and uh, the European Commission. So actually half of the resources are uh, dedicated to the all European researchers. So, of course, there is a, a process to apply for the resources, and there will be a both technical and scientific review that uh, uh, whether whether you are sort of going to make uh, good use of the resources. But uh, Lumis, in in principle, that's that's available for uh, all European researchers. 
I'd also mention that if you're like a if you are just starting your like in a, in a research group or something, you might also want like if you, like many of these, let's say the billing units and everything like that depends on on your supervisor's uh, approval. So you might also bring this information to them if you're not utilizing these resources. Because like from our point of view here in Alta, we our job is to make our researchers' lives easier and make them better, uh, get them their research done better. And if that means that they're using CSC resources efficiently, that's of course best uh, for us because then that means that they get their research done better. So uh, even if there's no like, competition between these systems the main thing is to get the research done and if your group would benefit from this i highly recommend uh, starting the discussion also in your research groups yeah that's that's exactly true and i mean that's uh, i guess for csc point of view it's it's really i mean uh, we are not trying to make make money here i mean we are here to make research done better and whatever is the best tool i mean uh, I can. I don't think we we typically give users to uh, using that. Okay, you should not be using CSC. You should go to the your local university cluster or laptop. But of course, I mean there are cases when that might be the better solution. So it's uh, it it's always depends a bit that what you are doing. Sometimes it might be that uh, I don't know how it's general to queuing situation in Triton. It, it mm -hmm. just might be something that there is a certain period in some month that okay yeah triton is uh, fully packed up and for some reason Pufti has a bit more resources so of course yeah you need to do sometimes a bit work to maybe move your data check that software is available there but still uh, it, it's not that you use either one system or other it's uh, and it, it's also not that you use only Pufti or mahti or lumi i think in most cases at least when you go a bit bit further away you you use a mixture of different resources depending what what best fits you yeah so um i think most of the hackmd questions are basically being answered there some about where the different things are. Yeah. 